Praise the name of Jesus. Wow, that was really, I mean, that really should be the message. Because when you hear the story of the impact of the word of God, of, of God in people's lives, that is what should be the emblem of it all. Amen? All these testaments that we have listened to today, you know, you can, you can really think deep back, like Pastor, Pastor Shego mentioned, it connects different people. It connects you, it connects much more people than you can imagine. But my prayer is that in the way that we have heard it, God will ensure that he will extend it into the future because what we are talking about is not the past, neither is it the present, but we are talking about the future. Amen? And that future is you. Amen. This morning, I haven't heard this beautiful story, journey, and the impact of God within us and amongst us. I want to share an exhortation with us that I've titled, Made in Heaven. Amen? Made in Heaven. And our scripture will be read from, and we're going to read it together, Matthew 6, from verse 9 to 13. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. And if we can have it on the screen, it is a very common scripture that we all are familiar with. So let's just kick on and let's read one to go. Pray like this, our Father in heaven, May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's stop there. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you read it in the King James Version, it says, After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Permit me to share this brief exhortation under the topic made in heaven. You all know how important it is for some people, the label of what they are wearing. You know? The, 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 the material of the shirt doesn't really matter to some people. It's a label. And some people would pay through their nose to wear the label they think is the right label. I heard somebody watch a video of a guy who was wearing a short, a slippers, and so I mean, I looked at him. I wouldn't actually look at him twice. But somebody who knows the value of what he was wearing walked up to him and said, can you tell us how much your t-shirt is? I dropped my jaw. The t-shirt was like, I mean, some thousands of pounds, like 2K. Then the short was another. The jacket, my goodness, the jacket was like in the region of 16K. Then don't even go to the chain. Because the guy who was checking out actually brought, I didn't know that there was something like that that you can use to touch a necklace, and I will tell you whether it's an original one or not. The jewelry was $25,000. And it was just walking around. I said, ah, ah. And I checked, it didn't have two heads. What am I saying? The label matters to people. In this year of our 20th anniversary, I want to figuratively use the narrative of our celebration to showcase the fact that the fullness of God, the fullness of God that you and I are craving for, the experience of what 
God should do an impact in our lives is already been designed and made ready in heaven. God is not about to go and make it. When we're growing up, there's something they call ready-made. And a lot of us actually buy ready-made here. You don't need, I mean, when we went to school, I, I, I didn't go to the mall. Some of us grew up going to malls. I went to the tailor. That we will go and buy the cloth, which they will measure it. And then you go to the tailor, the tailor will measure you. And they will sew the cloth into your size. In fact, they will put a little bit of allowance so that you can grow into it. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, some of you went to the malls where they go to buy you ready-made. What God promised you is not about to go and make it. It is already made in heaven. Amen? amen. When people celebrate anniversary, when you celebrate the fifth anniversary, it is referred to as the wood anniversary. When you celebrate the 10th anniversary, it is referred to as the 10th as teen, teen anniversary. If you celebrate 15th, it is called the crystal. If you celebrate 25, it is called the silver. If you celebrate the 30th, it is called pearl. If you celebrate the 35, it is called jade. If you celebrate 40th, it is called ruby. If you celebrate 45, it is called sapphire. If you celebrate 50, we're used to that, it's called golden jubilee. If you celebrate 60th, it is called diamond. Last Sunday, we had a wonderful elderly, one of our elderly mothers or grandmother who celebrated her 70th, and that is usually referred to as a platinum. Amen? If you celebrate 100, it is celebrated as centenary. I deliberately omitted 20th because I want to ask you, when you celebrate 20, what are you celebrating? I know some of you have tried to check on Google, yeah? You can check it. When you celebrate 20, it is referred to as celebrating China. China. I almost titled my message, Made in China. But I thought many of you, when you hear Made in China, you will query me. So I said, Made in Heaven. But I now know that you get what I'm, where I'm going. Let's use the, that narrative, made in China. You and I know that what China is known for in our living generation is that China is known as the living, the eastern manufacturing power block in our living generation. There is nothing existing, no goods existing in any part of the world that China has not made a version of theirs. And they make it cheaper and they make it easy. In that narrative and with that understanding, let us read that verse of scripture again and say our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven what we are saying this morning and I want you to connect with me today with the narrative that there is nothing you desire here on earth there's nothing you desire and you pray about here on earth in the Lord's prayer that heaven has not already made and prepared for you to have. You have ready in heaven, even as we speak now, 
as you are listening to me, there is in existence in heaven everything you are praying about, you are going to pray about, and that you desire for God to give to you. Is in existence. That is why I can say to you of a fact that it is not just ready-made. It is already there for you to access and to connect with it. If you want to connect to it, that is why the Bible language is very specific. It is specific to say that let your will be done and be made to manifest in earth as it is already existing in heaven. Are you getting me? You are praying in that scripture, let your will be done on earth, let it manifest here on earth as I can see it already manifesting in heaven. Now my question is, how many of you can see what I see. How many of you are preparing this morning to see what God can see in heaven already existing? Isaiah 43, 19 say, for I am about to do a new thing. In fact, in the King James says, I do a new thing. And it says, see I'm about to do a new thing. Giving us the context as if he's just about to do it. Now said, no, see. It's already happening. It's already existing. It's actually in there for you to access. In fact, he asked the question, I have already begun do you not see it? We're well, speaking to the leaders this morning and those who come early at nine. I say to, to showcase the glory of God. It's not that God is just about to manufacture his glory. The glory is already there. God is just looking for who will showcase my glory. Who is it? That wants to make themselves a candidate of glory showing, glory revealing. See, I have already started. Can you not see it? Say with me, I can see. Say with me, I can see what I am praying for. That is why the Bible tells you, before you ask, I have already given it to you. While you are yet speaking, your prayer is already answered. You are not saying to God, you are not trying to convince God to do what you are asking him to do. No, he said he wants to do it in the first place. This year is a year where your faith is going to rise beyond your comprehension. And that's why I said you should just pray with me, oh Lord, open my eyes. No, pray that prayer. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes of my understanding. Say with me. So that I can see by the authority of the word of God what you have promised me in the mighty name of Jesus. Anytime you open your mouth to talk to God, you must have your faith art on. Because when you speak with the mind of God, anything you speak comes to pass. That's why the Bible says, mind what you say. And we said it during the watch night. One of the things God said to us is that, mind your tongue this year. When something bad happens, you don't say, somebody is finished. Because I'm not finished. I'm, about, I'm about, actually about to start. Don't say, oh, this... you. Stop that. Why? Because as you are saying it, you are evoking a force 
that the whole of the world cannot hold back. Amen? Amen. And I am excited this year that God wants to manifest through each and every one of us through each and every one of us, everything that he has already said he wants to do in the first place. Now, getting to that point, the next verse of the Lord's Prayer in verse 11, from where we stopped, says, give us today the food we need. Isn't it? Give us our daily bread. Our daily bread there refers to the representation of what our need on earth is. Because for somebody, your need is not bread. Your need this year is healing. And we just had that beautiful, wonderful story of healing, God dishing healing out to people when they believe and trust in him that he can do it. Amen? And so your healing is really up to you and is coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? No matter what it is that is battering you, healing is coming your way in Jesus' name. Amen. For somebody, it is not bread that they need. For somebody, they need their own child. They need their own child because they can see all around them children. And they're saying, God, like Hannah said, when is my coming? I say to you, under the unction of the word of God this morning, I can hear and I can see babies all around you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 54 said, to, said, said about, about that one. He said, you are like that woman who is barren, but is being said to go and prepare to keep the house. Amen? God is preparing to unleash the signs and wonders that will make the world to know that there is a God who is indeed Jehovah. Amen? Amen. For somebody, it's not a child that they desire. For somebody, is that they just need sufficiency. You are hardworking. But nothing to show for it. You are living from hand to mouth. God is saying to you that this year, 2023, your story will change. Amen. Will change for the better. Will change for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God is saying to you this morning that can you see what I am seeing? Can you see the fact that that career, I am the one who gave it to you. And I want to prosper you. I'm not trying to break you down with that career. I want to bless you through the career. That business is not meant to run you crazy. It's meant to be a channel. And I want to prosper it. Somebody is saying, God, why is all these decisions that I'm making not turning out the way I want it to turn out? Allow God. God is saying, I know that yours and your need will be met even as it is being provided for in heaven already in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever your need is this morning, say with me, by the grace and the authority of the word of God, I call these things in the will of God that is not already existing in my life. I call them their name as though they already exist. Because they already exist in heaven. Amen? Amen? You can actually say to God, that thing you said I will have, I'm actually ready for it. That's how Abraham learned to talk to God. That's how all those patriarchs in the Bible learned to talk to God. Because they know that when God writes it down, it's already sealed. He sealed it not because he thinks he didn't hear it, he sealed it there because when you are going to come back to say you want it, he will be ready for you in the name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, if that would be the case that is already existing, all you need to do for God is that you need to live with God in a way that you have a peaceable life, a fulfilling life, and a life that 
has been provided for by Christ. That is all that you desire. Now the question is, so why am I not having it? Why is it not coming to me? Why the delay? Somebody is asking. Wherever there's a delay, now note this down. Wherever there's a delay, and whenever there's a delay, the delay is not from that side. The delay is always from this side. Amen? The delay is never from that side because it is already existing. In fact, in Korea business, I don't know who, if there's anybody who runs a Korea business here, you know that when you order for something, it is packaged for you and it's dispatched. Many a times you call and say, I've not received what I ordered. They said, no, we've dispatched it. The message or the order is on the way. And then they do what? They give you a tracking number. What some of us need to do this morning is to track where that thing is being delayed. Because there's a delay somewhere. And Daniel understood that very firmly. When he understood that there was a delay, I ordered this and then there's a delay. He went where? He went to the place of prayer on his knees. And he started to track it. And the tracking took him to where he was being held. And of course, he dislodged it. This morning, the authority and the power to dislodge everything that is holding down your blessings from God, the manifestations of your blessings and prophecies from God, this morning you receive that authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Romans 8.19 tells us very clearly that yes, you are waiting. You are waiting for what God promised you. I am waiting. And that's where Apostle Paul revealed that the whole of creation is waiting for what is causing the delay. What is causing it is the courier. The courier is the one causing the delay. So he says everybody is... If you are waiting for somebody, you'll be expectant. You start looking. This is the Korea company we said. Anytime your heart lifts with joy, I say, oh, that doesn't come. In fact, you almost go to that and say, no, you're looking for me. Say, no, 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 we're not looking for you. We're going to number number 106, not you. Yours is number, number six. This is number 106. That is expectation. This, this year, God will not make your expectation to go unanswered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Daniel ordered and Daniel tracked it correctly and Daniel prayed it through and it was released unto him in the same way that God is going to answer you that what is already existing for you in heaven will be released back to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All these testimonies that we heard it is to showcase the fact that God is the one who ordered your steps here where you are and the same way that he ordered their steps for DBG here I actually saw his picture when he was 10 years old a few days ago you get to see it some of these days baby in school uniform <laughs> Doreen Remember what the printer that used to be here, right in this spot, that huge, massive printer, when they were being taught how to photocopy and how to laminate. Those are days now. Oh, Sophie, remember all those days. Those are days where lives are on, were unfolding. The same God then is still the same God now. It's just that it has become for us a season that has shifted and there is now a roll call of new sets and those who were being mentored have now become those who are mentoring others. Amen? Amen. And for me is to say to you, where are you sit? Where are you positioned in this whole thing? We're asking you 
in this 20th year of this house, we're about setting the, the banner and the journey for the next 20 years. I will share this prophecy and I will round up to a close. As I was preparing for this, one thing that God kept showing to me was a story of Lot's wife looking back. And I felt God is saying to some, someone here that why and what has been keeping, keeping you in the delay, delay line is because you've been looking back. You've been looking back. You believe more in your past than the future I want to take you into. And God is saying, stop it. Let that future go. Sorry, let that past go. That past has nothing to do for you anymore. It's now just history. The past of a, of a wood are ashes. What can you do with ashes? Nothing. The future is the dry wood that will burn again. God says, look into the future. Because your future is more powerful than your past. When you are positioned and placed in the right places, we are the family of God that God is now going to use to ignite new fire, new grace, new testimony. And I remember some of the beautiful things that God has worked out for me. And it's about to work out for you just because you are in the right place, doing the right thing. You know, many years ago, as we, Tony and I, were busy living our lives, pastoring the church, doing what we felt God was asking us to do. Some of them very stupid. I mean, one of the stupid part of it was that we had a house. And we have the house. And we were going to rent it out and be earning some money. And God said, no, don't rent it out. Actually, use it to support people. For a period of almost two years, two and a half years, we were just putting people there who needed it. Of course, not for entirely free, but in a way that it was totally subsidized to help them. Because we, we had a mortgage on it. We're doing that. Sometimes we say to ourselves, isn't this crazy? Isn't this stupid? But God said, no, no, no. I sent you. You know, one day, the, the story made sense. One day, a friend of mine that I've known for a long time just called me out of the blues and said to me, hey, Tune, how are you? Where are you? I said, I'm in my office. Legion House. Say, I just landed in intro. I need to see you. See you quickly. And he said, oh, yeah, I'm in my office. And here he arrived. Guess what? He said, God spoke to him while in abroad. A, a sum of money that I have never seen before in myself in cash. He said, go and give it to Tunde Balogu because he needed it. Guess what? That was a time we were looking for school fees. Was it for George? Was for was that one? It was George. It was George. It was George? When George was going abroad, we were asking God, how are we going to pay his school fees? He wants to. He's gotten admission. He's been held back. No money to pay. I don't have the money. We've promised him, but we will. God will supply. And he believed in the God of his parents that God would supply. When he came into my office, he didn't even sit down. He just said to me, myself and my wife, God spoke to me that we should come and give you this money because you needed it. I held it. I said, this is the school fees for our son. He said, there you go. He called his wife then, then and then and said, this is what I said to him. Now, the testimony for them is that he said from that day, his wife started believing him as a prophet. Because he told it, when he told his wife that God said to me to go and give it to Tune Balu, his wife said, well, I don't know whether that is you really heard right, but, but yeah, well, okay, okay. I, but when he called to say this is what I said, that the need for, and it was exactly what we needed for the school fees. When you do God, God will be good to you. Amen? 
It didn't take us long to just call the school and say, we pay the money. Boy, go and start school. That is how God works. I want to challenge you this year. Get yourself ready for God. Get yourself prepared to allow God to take you on a journey. All of you know how my heart has always been to pray in office, either as counselor, as MP. Then you sat to your night down and you said, next to be my chaplain. that day. It wasn't like that inside. Because it was what I never agreed. When you do God's will, when you surrender yourself to do what God is telling you to do, it might look stupid. It might look as if it doesn't make sense. Everybody, people might even be laughing at you. Please stick to it. Amen? Because the day of reward is coming. And this year is your year of reward. Why? Because everything you prayed for is already made for in heaven. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we surrender to you and we worship your only righteous name. As a result of these testimonies, that you have granted us to share in this year about the past, about the journey, about the story, about the experience. The twists and turnings now don't matter. All that matters now is the glory that returns to you. Father God, we use this to connect amongst ourselves and to encourage one another. That it is yet another season to make ourselves be prepared. Father God, help us as we journey along. Let your glory descend and be showcased all around us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that the manifestation of what is already in heaven, Father, begin to give us the grace to see it come to pass in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says we call the things that be not their name as though they are. So it is, O oh God, we begin to call into existence all those things that you have made for already for us in heaven that are already not in our lives. Let them begin to take shape, take position. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you and expect God to manifest his glory in your life in Jesus' name. Amen.